Hi, I'm Philip Wright from uh, from 70s kit makers Paper Lace. I'm the, I'm the actually original drummer singer, and uh, and you're watching Heritage Musicians in conversation with Joe Matera. Paper Lace basically um for a few years did the traps around the clubs and all of that from the in the early 70s until um you went on to the uh, Opportunity Knox talent show back in England in uh what was I think 1974 or 73 and um 73 yeah 73 and um that's where you sort of uh, basically things just took off for the bands just tell me about all about that happening to you guys yeah we took uh, we took an audition in 1970 uh for Opportunity Knox uh so it took three years before we were invited to go on the show uh, and by that time, we thought, <clears throat> do we really need it at this point in our career? Because we would, we'd made made a couple of records, not had any hits, but we'd made a couple of records, and uh, we were we were getting possibly a little bit big for our boots. And um, and then we looked at the viewing audiences and realised that uh, Optin De Knox had about seven million uh, viewing audience. So we thought, this isn't a contest. Let's get on there, you know. <laughs> So uh, yeah, we did. We we, we went. Uh, there was a big a big hotel in Nottingham, in the uh, one of the gateways into Nottingham, called the Bridgeford Hotel. At that time, it's actually still there, but it's not a hotel anymore. It's uh, it's apartments, but it was a big hotel, and uh, that's where they held the auditions. And there was about a thousand people there, oh. all all with their little act, or you know, their juggling dog, or, or whatever they whatever they brought along. And um, when it came our turn, uh, we, we sort of got in front, set, set the kit up quite quickly uh, and then ran through a few numbers and they kept saying, well, can you do another one? We did another one. And, can you do another one? Yeah, we'd do another one. And it all looked a bit of a, to anybody watching the others, <laughs> it looked a bit of a fix, uh, but it wasn't. They just, they just liked what we did and they thought we were good TV. Um, and then... Uh, and then we thought, oh right, you know, this is it. We're we're in, we're on on the show. So, but after a couple of months, after this audition, after a couple of months, we thought, uh, well, maybe they've forgotten about us, you know. But maybe it's not not such a done deal or whatever. But then in 1973, we got a, a letter, as you did then. A letter, <laughs> and, that's right. Uh, not an email. <laughs> no. <laughs> and um, and that invited us onto the show, and we went onto the show. We got a guy. A guy from Nottingham, a sort of, uh, he was a Labour councillor actually in Nottingham, that was a good friend of mine. Uh, and he was very articulate. And so we needed someone that could sit down with Huey, Huey Green, if you remember Huey Green, um, sit down with him and introduce us properly and tell him about the band, tell us, tell Huey Green about the band and what we did and what we were about. And, um, and then we did our first uh, first song on there, and and we won it, which which took us on to the next week, and the next week, and the next week. We we won it about three, maybe four, maybe four times max. Um, but it meant that we were on TV uh, because there was a gap, and then there was an all winners show. It meant that we were on on TV for for sort of five weeks on the trot, really. Very much similar to what I suppose what Britain's got talent today. Very much so back then. Yeah, but uh, but in those days, uh, <laughs> the show had much more integrity than the ones <laughs> that are on TV yeah. today yeah. because it wasn't a question of just pressing a button and voting. It was you've got to put pen to paper. You got to. It was a postal vote, and and we had thousands of votes in our favour. I mean, it was it was quite amazing when you saw the the pile of. Uh, and letters that came uh, into a sort of television house at uh, Teddington. Um, it was quite amazing. Um, so in that year, the 1974, that was such a busy year for you guys. I mean, you had two hits. You had um, The Night Chicago Died and Billy Don't Be a Hero. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we had uh, Billy Don't Be a Hero came first. Um, and then uh, while uh, uh, Mitch Murray and Peter Callender, the writers, they were looking for a deal in the States. Um, and while they were negotiating with, I think it was Mercury at the time, uh, while they were negotiating, um, Bo Donaldson and the Haywoods recorded Billy Don't Be a Hero, and it was number one in the States. Yeah. And uh, we said, you know, what, what's going on? You know, we've missed out. We, it could, we, could have been, we could have been number one. And Mitch Murray said, uh, don't worry. He says, the next one, 
it's going to get there. And uh, no, Chicago Dive was number one in the States. Now, you, you, um, when you went to number one in America, I mean, you never guys uh, actually toured America. So what was the uh, reason why that? Do you think that would have changed things for you if you did? Well, in those days, you, you had to have help to tour. You, 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 couldn't, you couldn't manage it on your own. You couldn't do anything on your own. Uh, and we approached Mercury, who we were signed up with then, and as we said, you know, we'd, we'd, love to, uh, we'd love to tour. What's the chances of you organising something and maybe, you know, contributing a bit of uh, dosh to actually uh, help us out there? Because it, it was a big thing. You had to equipment and marketing and all the rest. It wasn't as switched on or as easy because of the internet as it is today. It was nothing like that. It was, a, it was hard, hard work to try and organise and get a tour together. And, um, and Mercury said, look, you were number one. We don't need the band out here to get number one records. And they basically refused to help us out. So with the, um, just tell me a bit about recording um, Billy Dumpy Hero and then the Not Chicago Died from a studio point of view. Yeah, we, uh, we recorded it at um, a Majestic Studios in, in Clapham. And, uh, and the, it, was a, it was an old uh, bingo hall. Uh, or, or it, was a, it was a cinema to start off with. Then it was a bingo hall. And above the bingo hall was this studio. And it was a, it was a, a great studio. And there was a, an engineer and a, a tape op there. Um, in actual fact, um, the engineer I'm still in touch with. And he's, uh, he's a lovely guy. Uh, we, we, we sort of caught up on, <coughs> on Facebook. And... Um, he said, well, you made me famous. Everybody asks, did you record that? <laughs> you know, and he's, uh, he's, a, he's a lovely guy, Jer Derek Chandler. The, the, yeah, the studio, the studio was a, it was a great studio. Mitch Murray was there always. And, um, and we, we put the tracks down and um, yeah, it was, it, was, it, was, it was very good. Okay, being a drummer, I mean, you were, you were the uh, lead vocalist on those two songs. I mean, uh... Back then, uh, you didn't have sort of like click tracks, didn't you? You sort of just played along the studio together. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was uh, basically, there, was, there were no click tracks, no, nothing like that. Um, and it was basically, you had to, you, you basically put perhaps drum and bass down and, um, and then added guitars and that sort of thing. And then we, then we put the vocals on separately. But, uh, but you had to complete the backing track, really, uh, from scratch, um, yeah, just like that. Now, after you had your two hits, I mean, you sort of disappeared in some ways, I mean, in, in, in the public eye, but uh, what sort of happened there? Was that got to do with internal politics or just that you, you think you, the success so fast played a big part in it? Um, uh, it was really, it was the old story, you know, musical differences and all the rest of it. We, uh, we sort of parted company in about 85, something like that. Um, Went our separate ways. Uh, I I stuck in with uh, with Cliff. Um, we've we've always been sort of mates. That's he's, Cliff is the bass player, um, and uh, and he's in the he's in the band now. So so there's two of us stuck together. But we 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 found that um, I mean I I I gave up music for quite a while. I got a proper job and uh, got out of it for you know, a number of years. And then, and then I went back in because I missed it so much. And during the time, it didn't take me very long because while I got this proper job, I, I, I got in with a semi-pro band that was uh, around Nottingham at the time, got a very good name and uh, um, kept my hand in music musically by uh, performing with them. And at one point there was um, basically two versions of Paper Lace. There's your, there's your version, which goes today, and there's... I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty um, sort of common over the years that a lot of these bands from, from that era end up sort of, uh, I suppose, legally fighting each other in order to sort of have the name and continue on. I mean, for example, like the Glitter Band, is all these bands that are sort of split into two or three different versions. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, the story is that, um, that, that a band evolved because of, we, we, one, of the, uh, one of the guitarists, he... Uh, he said, would you mind if I formed, carried on, basically? And we said, well, no, yeah, no, nobody's really bothered at, the, at that point. And this is about 84, 85, something like that. Um, and 
I, I said, well, I think as long as there's a as long as there's an original member in the band. Uh, I'm not too. I'm not too worried. I mean, if you think you can carry on without the original vocalist, then fair enough. But I'm not. I'm not really interested. And uh, and he stayed in the band for about three, four months, and then he left. And this band, these other three members, thought, right, we'll hang on to the name and we'll perform. And they went out and got another member in, and they went out, no originals whatsoever, and they went out as as Paper Lace. Um, and they, they performed and they did a lot of gigs and all the rest of it. And when, um, when I decided to sort of uh, reform the band, if you like, in, uh, in the early sort of 2000s, I, um, I came across these and uh, they were quite sort of vehement at the fact that they uh, wanted to uh, own the name and all the rest of it. And we got into a bit of a legal battle and I lost. And um, I lost because because they had a, a pretty slick talking uh, barrister. And, um, and and the thing is that the, the, the law, as you know, sometimes is a complete ass. And, uh, and, and in, in our case, very generally, because the, the fact that we were two, were two of the original bands and I was the original vocalists, uh, getting, you know, a, a sort of cut of the uh, PPL and that sort of thing, uh, sort of broke no ice really. Yeah. And um, and as I say, I lost I lost uh, I lost the name, and um, and I it cost me two thousand 